there are three main ways to get into print on demand. I feel these are the most popular. If you think there's a fourth way or a fifth way or a sixth way, then let me know in the comments down below. After hearing all three ways, you can decide for yourself which one you think is best for you. There's no right, there's no wrong. I will tell you all the three ways. I will list three benefits and three drawbacks of each method or each way. And, uh, and I'll let you make the decision yourself. So before we get into these three ways, my name is Shimmy Morris. If you are new here, I make videos on print on demand, Amazon FBA, affiliate marketing, YouTube, basically anything that will help you make money online. And it would mean the world to me if you, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel, you hit that like button and got this video to 100,000, no, I'm kidding. If you got this video to like 500 likes, it would mean a lot. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's just get right into it. The first method, I like to call it the mass uploading approach. It's catchy, right? The mass uploading approach, I like that name. And with this approach, you would sign up to a whole horde of print on demand websites, and you can use this video up here as reference, hopefully I remember to put it there, but as reference to all the different print on demand websites as I have done a review video, you know, comparing pretty much most of them. And what you'll do is you'll create basic designs that look like this. Okay, just like this. You don't want to create designs that look like this. All right, this mass upload approach is only for super simple designs. The reason I say super simple designs is because you're going to really struggle if you're also creating masterpieces here. You need it to be very simple text-based designs in order for this mass upload approach to actually work. Once you have those designs, you want to upload them everywhere, okay? And to give you some specifics, you want to do 10 designs per day and upload them to 10 platforms per day. That means over the space of a month, you'll be uploading 280 designs over 10 different platforms. That is really, really good. And that is why this is called the mass upload approach because in case you haven't realized, there's a lot of uploading going on. And I mean a lot of uploading. All right, and that's another reason why we want to keep the design simple because for you, in, or, in order for you to create all of these designs, they can't be crazy intricate designs. The idea of this approach is to spread yourself thin over tons of different websites. And hopefully, I mean, you're not gonna get sales from all of them, but the idea is because you spread yourself so far over different websites, some t-shirts may pick up. And when some t-shirts pick up, it's much easier easier for you to scale up and increase, you know, and, and, and create more t-shirts in that specific niche. So that's the general idea. Bear in mind that you might not be making a good amount of income at the beginning. And also bear in mind that most of your shirts, I was going to say a lot, but most of your shirts actually won't get sales. All right, only a fair few of your shirts are gonna get sales, but those are the ones that you will eventually focus on down the line. All right, now let's quickly discuss three benefits and three drawbacks to this uh, mass upload approach and then we'll move on to the next one. So the first benefit is sp spreading yourself like really thin. It gives you more chances of success because you're putting yourself on 10 different platforms. You're giving yourself 10 designs per day. So you're really, really giving yourself as many opportunities to get t-shirt sales, like just a lot of opportunities. Right now it also allows you to quickly, this is the second one, it also allows you to quickly like dip your toes into hundreds of different niches because if you're uploading 10 designs a day, they don't all need to be in the same niche. All right, you can just, you were just talking about uploading, uploading, uploading. So this allows you to test tons of niches very, very quickly. And the third and final one is once you have a winner, right? Once you have a successful t-shirt, it's pretty much easy to replicate that success with that t-shirt design in other niches or to scale it up or to focus on that single design and post it on even more platforms. So it's just about finding that successful one. The second method, I like to call it the mass marketing approach. These names are catchy, right? Let me know if you, give the video a thumbs up if you think these names are catchy. I think they're catchy. Anyway, what is the mass marketing approach? Well, with this approach, it's not about signing up to tons of different pod websites, print on demand websites. It's about signing up to tons of different advertising platforms. The only thing that you have to know about this approach is it's quite an expensive approach to get into, but there are benefits which justify the cost to get into them. You will most likely lose money at the beginning. However, there is a much bigger picture that you have to see here and the potential gains are much, much higher. You would create very few niche specific designs and upload them to your own Shopify store. The reason you want to upload them to your own Shopify store and not Redbubble, Teespring, Merch by Amazon or any of the others is because you're going to be sending your own traffic to this store. So in my mind, why on earth would someone want to send their own paid traffic to someone else's website and help them grow? No, 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 no. You want to send this paid traffic that you're paying for to your own website so that you can grow. 
So that's why I say Shopify. And I know Shopify costs a bit of money to per month. I think it's like twenty nine dollars per month, but it's it's worth it for this for this you know idea. You would sign up for Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Twitter ads, Pinterest ads, Etsy ads, Google ads, YouTube ads. Maybe not Google ads. Google ads is a weird one, but basically all the different ad platforms. Okay, you'd sign up to all of them. The idea is to blast your website with tons of traffic from tons of different websites, okay, until it gets to the point where it's getting enough organic traffic from the SEO and from people just hearing about it, seeing it, seeing ads, seeing the shares and just going and clicking your website. So that is kind of the idea, right? You want to just throw a whole bunch of money at ads, blow up your website and you will start getting sales like that way. And as I said at the first, it's going to cost you a lot of money, but eventually when traffic starts coming in organically because your website starts ranking on Google and all these other um, factors, that's where you're going to start seeing profit. Now, it's very similar to the company Hawkers. I don't know if you've ever heard of Hawkers and I don't know them in the other room, but basically Hawkers are sunglasses and they pretty much did this approach. They blasted their website with ads and traffic it cost them an absolute fortune they gave away so many sunglasses for like a few pounds it was so cheap and these are good quality sunglasses and in essence what they did is they built up this huge huge company which now is actually worth a lot of money they sell a lot of sunglasses they get a lot of organic traffic and they're actually making a decent amount of profit now so that's kind of the general idea here so you can see how this approach can cost quite a bit of money to actually get into, but you can also see the benefits here. You're building a fully fledged clothing business, okay? It's, it's, this is a full scalable business that theoretically, if you wanted to, you could sell it one day, right? You could sell the, the, the brand because you're building a brand in essence, right? And another thing, because this, because you're building your own brand, because you're building your own website, what you can do is down the line, when you start seeing certain designs get more sales than other designs, you can start bulk buying those designs yourself and actually massively increasing your profit margins because using websites like Teespring or Printful or any of them, Printify, whatever they may be, your profit margins are very, very tiny. But if you know what t-shirts are selling or what face masks are selling, whatever it may be, what stickers are selling, right, you can buy this product in bulk, in massive, massive bulk and actually hugely increase your profit margin. So there's just there's, there's endless scalability and there's endless opportunity with this method. It just costs a bit. So let's discuss three benefits and three drawbacks uh, to, this, to this approach. I've got them written down here. So to me, this is the closest method to a real scalable and sellable business. And I think that it's a huge benefit because I only like dealing in, you know, proper businesses that will actually be able to get me something down the line. You know, I'll be able to sell one day or you know, rather than just one hit wonder products, I'd rather just build a business. So for me, that's a huge benefit. And another benefit is you get to build your website in the process rather than relying on someone else's. So I've heard so many horror stories of people being shut down from Rebel, shut down from Amazon, shut down from Etsy, shut down from Teespring, right? No more shutting down. If you, if you completely have control of your own website, of your own marketing, your own everything, there's no one there to shut you down. So the safety aspect is just brilliant. And lastly, you're in complete control of everything as well. So regard, as well as you know, not being able to be shut down, you're also in control of the customer service. You're in control of the marketing. You're in control of your website, in control of the look, just everything. You're just in full control of everything. Um, and I think that's a huge benefit. Right now, a few negatives, right? Three negatives. It's incredibly expensive to do this method. Well, it's not incredibly expensive. It's expensive to do this method. It can cost you quite a bit to get enough traction to start building up your website to the point where it's getting organic searches and you know, and it's to, to the point where it's actually ranking on Google. Now, another thing is marketing really isn't easy. You're gonna have to think outside the box. You might have to do offline marketing tactics, you know, newspapers, leaflets, whatever they may be, your local community centers, whatever it may be, right? You're gonna have to think of way out the box on marketing because a lot of people are doing marketing. You want to stand out and be different. And that's where this can get hard because marketing is very, very difficult. And if you can master marketing, you will be just so much better off. Marketing is one of the most incredible skills to be able to master. And finally, um, it's probably the hardest approach of the three, just because marketing isn't easy and also creating a whole website and, and all of that comes with its own difficulties, okay? So creating a sexy looking website um, and marketing alongside it, we're talking about skills that not everyone necessarily has. And a lot of this you might have to learn yourself. So. It's definitely one of the hardest approaches, but I think it's the most rewarding. And the third and final method is called the design approach. 
I'm telling you guys, I should go into like naming or something. These names are just on fire. But anyways, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Um, the design approach. What is the design approach? The design approach is not about the print-on-demand websites. It's not about the marketing. It's solely about creating beautiful, breathtaking, artistic designs. And this approach is more for the purist, the guy who, or the girl, who loves creating designs, who's an artist, a graphic designer, who literally doesn't care about any other aspect except creating these beautiful designs. You would upload it to sites like Redbubble, Merch by Amazon, maybe Etsy, these kind of sites that handle the organic traffic so that way you don't have to worry about traffic, you don't have to worry about customer service. The only thing that you have to worry about is just creating brilliant, brilliant designs and putting them on t-shirts, on towels, on bags, on whatever, on stickers, you know, it doesn't make a difference. But the idea behind this design, right, is that you create a portfolio of beautiful, beautiful designs and, uh, and you sell them like that and people will buy because of how good the design is. And a very important thing to note regarding this design, sorry, regarding this approach is that Instagram is going to be your, your, you know, crux. It's going to be the, the, the main aspect of this business for you because you're going to use Instagram as your portfolio. You're going to share your designs on Instagram, not necessarily in t-shirt form, but just in, you know, an A4 kind of piece of paper form. You want to share your designs um, and then every so often, every couple of posts, you want to sprinkle in a t-shirt here and there, but you don't want it to be in their face, buy my t-shirt, buy my t-shirt. You want it to be, check out my design. Do you like my design? What do you think of my design? And then as I can extra bit, you can like, oh, and if you want, you can buy my t-shirt. All right, so you want it to be a very soft sell. I would say only go for this approach if you are an artist or a graphic designer or someone who's very, very talented in design. Now, again, if you're not any of those and you still want to go into this approach, then that's absolutely fine. You can do that. Um, it will be a bit hard for you. As I said earlier, I think this is more for the purist who doesn't really care about the money, doesn't really care about putting their stuff on t-shirts or anything. They just care about creating brilliant designs and the fact that they're putting it on a t-shirt is just a medium that they're able to transfer the design to so that they can then sell their artwork. So the three benefits and the three drawbacks. Let's discuss them. The three benefits. Well, this approach allows you to really design what your heart wants, okay? Not what the marketing is telling you, not what the 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 not what the trends are telling you, not what people are saying, what's enjoyable or not what's not enjoyable. It just allows you to design what you want to design, which I think is a huge benefit because it allows you to get a lot more enjoyment out of this. If you're designing purely for the sake of designing rather for the sake rather than for the sake of making money and um, you know, fulfilling other people's needs, you're gonna feel a lot happier. There's very little stress with this approach because you're not designing for the money, you're designing because you're just enjoying the process, right? So you're not worried about what can happen and what won't happen, you're just, you're just enjoying the journey and that's, I think, really, really important. And lastly, um, if one design picks up, and this is an important thing to note, if one design picks up, it generally will go quite far because if a good design gets picked up by, you know, a couple of people, gets shared, whatever, that design is probably gonna do very, very well. It'll get shared a lot, and if one person thinks it's a good design, a lot of other people think it's a good design as well, so that one design can really make it or break it for you. But again, don't focus on the money side of it, that's just a, an added you know, benefit, right? Right, the three negatives. It's incredibly time consuming creating these humongous, beautiful, not humongous, but these beautiful pieces of artwork that you are going to eventually put onto I don't know, a print-on-demand t-shirt, so it, it can take a very, very long time, especially as you're not making money, that you can notice that time a lot more. Um, and as I just said, there's very little money, especially when you start, unless one of your designs gets picked up quite quickly. And finally, you'll need quite a bit of artistic skill to get this one done. I personally don't think I'd be good enough at art to to do this approach. I, I, I'm good at art and I, and I do graphic design. I've done art my whole life, but I still think to really make something that is just truly beautiful and really would stand out, you need to be just excellent at art. Um, or some form of design. So that's that's definitely a drawback. Right, in conclusion, now that we have discussed those three approaches, let me know which one interests you the most and let me know if you think there are more, four, five, six, seven, 10, 50 approaches. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. I'm really, really curious to find out. And as well as that, I'm sure there are many other benefits and drawbacks to those three approaches, but I didn't want this video to drag on for too long. I wanted to give you some concise, um, and compact information about these three approaches. So I hope you understand that and I hope you like, you know, the way I've done this video. And I mean, more than anything, I hope you can use this video to help you make a concrete decision on which approach you wanna go to if you are planning on doing print on demand. 
If you think there are more approaches, then let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear them. I love learning from you just as much as you love learning from me. So definitely let me know in the comments. And as normal, thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it more than you probably realize. Um, it's just, I appreciate everyone who watches my videos, comments, likes, it means a lot to me. Um, and yeah, I just wanna say thank you and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.